Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. Let's walk through all the things you should do on your first flight with the DJI Mavic Mini. Previously, I demonstrated how to do a good pre-flight with your Mavic Mini. If you haven't watched it, click the link in the upper right corner now and watch it before you watch this one. This video will pick up right where the pre-flight episode left off and walk you through a great first flight. Here we go. Look at the flight status message. This will tell us if there are any problems with our system as the drone and controller go through the process of connecting with enough satellites to ensure solid GPS control. When you have connected with enough satellites, the message should read, Takeoff Permitted. Don't attempt to launch until you get this message. We've got the message, so we're ready to launch. I usually take a last look to make sure all my transmitter settings are good and do a visual last check to make sure no one is walking up to me from behind. Alright, here we go. Let's start off with an auto launch. Press the launch button on your screen and then press the button in the center and hold it until the count up message on the screen finishes and goes away. The drone starts its motors and lifts off from the ground. It will rise to about 4 feet and go into a hover. When I launch a drone, I like to let it hover for a few seconds just to make sure it's holding its position well. The Mini is hovering nicely, so let's keep going. Let's record the video of our first flight for posterity. Is the big dot on the right side of the screen white or red? If it's white, you're in photo mode. Press the button directly above it to switch to video mode. You'll see the button turn red. We can start the recording one of two ways. You can press the red button on screen, or you can press the button on the left shoulder of your controller. Either way, when you start recording, you'll see a counter appear on screen to show how long your recording has been going. If I hit either of the record buttons again, the recording stops. Press the record button again, like this, and it starts again. At any time, I can tilt the camera gimbal. On the left shoulder of the transmitter is a dial. If I turn the dial counterclockwise, the camera tilts down. You can see the view tilting down. If I turn the dial clockwise, the camera tilts back up. Let's bring the camera back to pointing straight forward with the shoulder dial. Now let's start moving the drone around. On your controller, your left stick moves the drone up and down. Push the left stick forward and you'll see the drone rise up. Let go of the stick and the drone hovers. Now pull the left stick back and the drone descends. Let go of the stick and it hovers. Let's try spinning the aircraft. Push the left stick to the left and the drone spins or yaws to its left. Now push the right stick to the right and the drone spins to the right. Keep spinning until the drone is back to its original orientation where the camera is pointing away from you. By the way, did you notice that I only moved the stick slightly? I didn't jam it all the way forward or back. This made my motions happen very slowly. If you keep your stick motions small to begin with, you'll have an easier time controlling the drone as you fly. Now let's try the right stick. Push the right stick forward and the drone flies forward. Pull the right stick back and the drone flies backwards. Push the right stick to the left and the drone slides to the left. Push the right stick to the right and the drone slides to the right. Now let me show you an exercise you can do with the right stick. We're going to fly the drone in a rectangular pattern. Now, start by pushing the right stick forward. Then left. Then back. Then right. We've drawn a box in the sky with the drone and we're back to where we started. Practice that a few times to get a feel for the right stick.
Now let's throw a complication into this pattern. I'm going to rotate the drone 90 degrees to the left by pulling my left stick to the left. Now the drone is pointed to my 9 o'clock or so. Now let's see what happens when we push the right stick forward. Aha! Instead of flying away from you as it did before, it flew to my left, or more accurately, it flew to its forward. Your stick controls will always move the drone based on the direction its nose is pointed, not which way you're facing. This is called orientation and it's the trickiest thing you have to learn as a new pilot. Remember when I had you launch the drone with the nose face out? This is why. I wanted you to start using the sticks with the easiest orientation first. Now we can learn about using the sticks in different orientations. Let's pull the right stick back. Sure enough, the drone flies backwards, or to the right from our perspective. If we push the right stick to the right, the drone flies away from us. Push the right stick to the left, and the drone flies toward us. Let's use the left stick to rotate the drone 90 degrees again, so now the camera and the nose of the drone is pointing right at you. Move the right stick to the left, and the drone flies to your right. Move the right stick to the right, and the drone flies to your left. Push the stick backwards, the drone flies away from you. Push it forwards, the drone flies back towards you. See how tricky orientation can be? The best way to think of this is to visualize yourself in the cockpit of that drone. That FPV view on your smart device is what your drone sees directly in front of it. If you are looking strictly at the FPV screen, orientation becomes much easier because then the stick controls match what you're seeing on the screen. The problem is, you have to keep your eyes on the drone rather than on your screen to fly safely. What you want to do is use the screen occasionally to help you get your bearings and don't stare at it. Let's go back to our box pattern exercise and test out what we've learned. I'll rotate the drone so that it's pointed to the left. Remember how to do that? You push the left stick either to the right or the left and the drone will spin around in place. I'll back it up to give us room on our screen. Now with the drone pointed to your left, let's draw a box. We want the drone to fly away from us. Look at your FPV view. That would be to your right of the FPV view. Push the right stick to the right and the drone flies away from you. Now let's move the drone to our left. Well, that's right where the drone is pointed, so we just point the right stick forward and it flies to the left. Now we'll bring it closer to us. That will be to the drone's left, so we push the right stick to the left and it works its way back to us. Finally, we want it to go to the right, which is going backwards for the drone. Pull the stick back and the drone flies to our right. Practice drawing this box several times, starting with the drone pointed to your left. When that feels comfortable, rotate it 90 degrees so the drone is facing you and practice the box that way. After that, rotate again so it's pointed right and draw the box again. You could literally spend your first few flights doing nothing but practicing this pattern to develop your skills with orientation. It takes getting used to, so be patient. And always remember, if you get confused or it's not going where you expect, just let go of the sticks. The drone will stop and hover, giving you time to figure out what you need to do. Let's get the drone pointing forward so I can continue with this lesson. I'm going to cover more things in this video, but if you're struggling with orientation, you don't have to tackle the rest of these topics on your first flight. Keep practicing the box pattern and orientation for as long as you need to feel confident. Then you can move on to the additional topics I'll cover here. So far, we've been using each stick independently. 
but you can use them together to create some great patterns. For example, if I push both sticks straight forward, what will the drone do? It will fly forward and up on a diagonal line. Now I'll spin the drone so it's facing me. If I now push the left stick back, as I push the right stick forward, it will fly back at me. Remember, I yawed the drone as it descends. Let's get back to our starting position. Have some fun trying different stick combinations to see what they do. Make sure you test these out in an open field and with enough elevation so you don't crash into something while you're learning. Remember, the Mavic Mini does not have an obstacle avoidance system. You must make sure to leave a safe space between you and the drone to avoid crashes. While the drone is close, I'm going to land it so I can demonstrate a manual launch. Position the drone over the place where you want to land. Again, point the nose of the drone away from you. That's just a good practice to get into. When you're ready, hit the land button on screen, hold the button on screen, and the drone will lower towards the ground. In some cases, the drone senses that the ground beneath it is not level, and it gives an error message. It won't land on its own. If this happens, just pull the left stick back. The drone will land. Keep holding the left stick back, and the motors will shut off. Now, let's launch manually. Pull both sticks back and to the inner corners as you see on screen. This will start the motors. Let go of the sticks. Now, to launch, simply push the left stick forward and the drone takes off. As you can see, manual launches are very simple. Let me introduce you to power modes. Take a look on the screen. See this mode P icon? That means you're flying in the position mode. The Mini has three different power modes, position, sport, or cinesmooth. Position mode is the default setting. To switch from one mode to the next, tap on the icon. I tap it once and it changes to S for sport. I tap it again and it changes to C for cinesmooth. Position mode is your middle power. Sport mode is top power and the fastest speed. Cinesmooth is low power. The purpose for the modes is that you choose the right mode based on what you're doing. For regular flying, you stay in position mode. If you're traveling a long distance or chasing a fast moving object, you fly in sport mode. When you want to slow down and get really smooth shots, or you're flying close to obstacles, switch to Cinesmooth. These modes are more important with the Mavic Mini than any other drone because the Mini is not a powerful drone and it is easily affected by winds. I have done a separate video on using position, sport, and cinesmooth modes. You'll see a link to it in the upper right corner now. As a new drone pilot, you need to watch that video. It could be the difference between you watching your drone fly away or getting it back safely. Let's wind up our first flight with a demonstration of what happens when you trigger a return to home. This is a safety feature you need to know how to use. If you have trouble with the drone during a flight or you lose it in the sky, you can trigger a return to home and it will fly back to its home spot and land. I'll fly out. Let's put it over 100 feet away. Now I press the home button, then press and hold the button in the middle of the screen for return to home. I get a message that the return to home has been activated. The drone first flies straight up to the altitude I specified in my settings. Next, the drone rotates to face me and flies back to where I launched from. Notice on my camera view that I can cancel the return to home at any time if I want to take control of the aircraft again. In this case, I'll let it land. Now the drone slowly descends.
The drone lands itself and shuts off the motors. I'm going to launch again, so I turn the drone around so it's facing away from me. I encourage you to practice the return to home procedure a few times so you know exactly what to do and what to expect if you experience trouble. We've been flying for a while. Get into the habit of checking your battery charge frequently as you fly. Remember, by default, when the battery reaches about 5 minutes of flight time left, the drone will issue its first low battery warning and attempt to return to home. By the way, 5 minutes of flight time left is an estimate. It could be affected by wind, cold temperatures, or the condition of the battery. Don't rely on the 5 minute warning as gospel. Bring the drone back with plenty of time to spare. I'm going to run down the battery to that point so you can see exactly what it looks like to get the first warning. This is the first warning. It tells you it will trigger a return to home unless you tell it not to. The drone isn't far away and I've got plenty of charge to return the drone, so I'm going to cancel the return to home by pressing the cancel on the screen. We now have a warning message on screen and a loud beep from the controller as a reminder, we are flying with a low charge. Now I'm going to run the drone down to its next warning, which is a critical low battery warning. The drone has hit the critical battery level and is attempting to land. Notice that I'm forcing the drone not to land by pushing the left stick up as I pull it back to my location. If I let go of the left stick, it will try to land automatically. I'm at a place where I want to land so I let go of the left stick. The drone lands and shuts down. Learn from this. You really don't want to get to the point where the drone is trying to land in its current position. Once you get that first battery warning, land it or bring it close to you so if it tries to land, you can easily see where it will come down. You don't want the drone to do a forced landing when it's several hundred feet away, hovering over water, or dropping into a bunch of trees. Our flight is done. Before we do anything else, check to see if you're recording video, and we are. Hit the shoulder button or the red button on screen to stop the recording. If you don't stop your recording, the camera may not save the last part of the recording, in which case you'll lose it. The recording is stopped. Now power off the drone, and then the transmitter. Remember, you always start your Mavic Mini's transmitter first, and then the drone. And you shut off the drone first, and then the transmitter. The drone is powered off, we can now turn off the transmitter safely. And this completes the first flight. We covered a lot of things on our first flight. Launches and landings, recording video and tilting the gimbal, left stick and right stick, orientation, using the sticks together, changing modes from position to sport to cinesmooth, return to home, and low battery warnings. Practice these actions in your first flights. Don't see how high it will go or how far away you can fly it. Keep it safe, keep it close, and learn to fly your drone the right way. Look on screen and you'll see more videos on the Mavic Mini. Watch them to keep learning. Click the subscribe button in the center of the screen. More tutorials will be published soon. Want to talk drones? Join my Facebook group. The link is in the description below.